Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Welcome to Tech Day. This is my weekly Saturday show where I talk about all the tech happenings from last week. Sorry that I did not have last Saturday be a Tech Day. I actually had to skip it because I pinched a nerve in my neck. Long story. But basically I got food poisoning and was retching so hard that I kinked something in my neck. Went to a spine therapist. And it's been doing a little bit better, so I'm not so stiff, and my arm is no longer numb. So editing is definitely a lot easier when you can feel what you're doing. Moving on. So today I would like to talk about the Galaxy S8, the LG G6. Also, there's some Nintendo stuff that I want to talk about. Oh, it's got to talk about Nintendo stuff. So let's get the Nintendo stuffs out of the way. So from this past week, I heard from Nintendo that it's going to be about... 2,000 to 3,000 yen yearly for the Nintendo Switch's online services. I know a lot of us were really nervous about if that was going to cost too much and how much is too much for the online services. So that translates to about 17 to 26 dollars per year. That's really not bad. I'm glad to hear that. Plus we get to have a free trial starting in March going through the fall and then if you like it you can opt into paying for the subscription for the online services. So it's not too bad. Thankfully. In other news from Nintendo, I have something here that is pretty cool. This is the new 3DS XL. This is the yellow Pikachu edition. This is coming to the US market. This one is the Malaysia and Singapore version, which does play US titles. It's just like all the versions that we have here in the United States. So officially, we're getting a US version that is coming the 24th of February, but online. I've already seen them sold out for pre-order at Best Buy and also at Amazon. I didn't even get a chance to take a look at that. Of course not. That's not how it works. But I do have one anyway. It's just that I don't have a warranty. So for those of you who thought that the 3DS is going away, no it's not. Nintendo's own president said that they intend to very much have in parallel, side by side, the 3DS and the Switch going at the same time. So let's show you what this puppy looks like. If you want one of these, when February 24th comes around, you better be outside the store because these are going to sell out like hotcakes. So look at this. This is yellow all the way through. On the front, we've gotten an adorable Pikachu. You notice that it's not like the Pikachu version from before that actually looked like it had nipples on the front, which was mighty unfortunate, but you can see that this is very, very modest, and I love the yellow color all the way through. John tells me that it looks like scrambled eggs as yellow, but I like scrambled eggs. I have no trouble with it. It's adorable. And if you do miss out on this and it gets sold out everywhere, then just go on Amazon and you can get the Singapore version. It looks absolutely awesome. And yes, the Singapore version is 100% compatible with the online store and all the games and everything, so no worries there. So now moving on to talking about Mobile World Congress, all eyes are on Samsung and LG. Now unfortunately we see that Samsung is not going to be releasing the Galaxy S8 at MWC, though we're hearing some rumors that they're going to put a little bit of a snippet, a one minute long snippet of a sneak peek preview of the S8 alongside their Tab S3 press release. So we'll see if that footage actually comes to fruition. They just are saying, yes, we're here, don't forget about us. They don't want you to forget because LG is releasing the LG G6 at MWC. So expect the S8 to be released in a press event later on, I believe about March 29th with an April 21st release for the S8. Samsung really wants to get this right. So each and every year we see leaks and leaks and leaks until there's literally nothing left to leak. We know exactly what the devices are going to look like before we even have them announced during their press announcements. And that same trend is happening with the LG G6 and with the Galaxy S8. So it's becoming more and more clear what the S8 and G6 are going to look like. So I wanted to talk about what we're expecting so far. And my interest lies with the commonalities. I'm starting to see a trend that this year is all about the smartphone with the biggest screen to body ratio possible. This is the year with the all screen phone. I'm also seeing that this is the year with a different aspect ratio. We're very used to having displays that are 16-9 aspect that works with all the content that we have presently, but there is more interest now for having screens that can support wider content. Plus with NuGet's inbuilt multi-screen ability, it looks like it would be nice to have a longer screen so that you can more easily use this multitasking option. And having a longer display allows for more room to have on-screen content that is not obstructed by on-screen navigation because if it's all screen, we're not going to be having any more hardware buttons. 
And then lastly, I can understand wanting to have a wider aspect ratio because that would allow us to have a longer screen instead of a wider screen. So we can have larger screens that go down this way instead of out this way. If phones get too wide, they're not very comfortable to hold and also it gets rid of that sweet spot ability to reach across the display if you've got normal thumbs, unlike me, where you can reach everything on the screen all the way across. So it makes sense. Another commonality that I am seeing is that this is the year of the digital assistant. Every company seems to want to bake in some type of artificial intelligence into their phone. I don't really like talking to my phone and asking it to do things for me, but that seems to be the trend of where the industry is going. So with all the leaks and everything that we've been hearing about, what else are we expecting with the Galaxy S8 and the G6? Well, we're seeing a lot of similarities. It looks like both of them are going to be water resistant, which is interesting because this would be LG's first time, I believe, going into the water resistant realm. This is probably going to be a sore spot for a lot of LG fans who love the removable back cover because LG was pretty much the last mainstream OEM that had that ability. But if LG does it right, and it looks like they might have because the leaks show a pretty thick looking phone, if there's a big enough battery in there, it should be okay. It looks like the S8 is going to be coming in two sizes, so expecting somewhere like a 3000 milliamp hour battery and a 3500 milliamp hour battery for the bigger version, we'll have to see. It looks like both of them are going to have a metal construction. It looks like the S8 will have glass on the back. Maybe the G6 will have glass on the back. We did see a leak of one that looked really nice and shiny black. But we also saw a G6 leak with a brushed aluminum looking back as well. I like both of them, honestly. It looks like both of them will be keeping their headphone jacks, which is a marketing jab against Apple. Both should be all screen like I've been discussing both with an 18 to 9 aspect ratio, roughly 2 to 1. It looks like the S8 should be 18.5 to 9. Both should have a fingerprint sensor on the back, although I'm kind of worried with what I'm seeing with the S8 because with the leaks, we're seeing that the fingerprint sensor is on the back to the right of the camera. That's kind of weird for left-handed people and also to just not have to smudge up the camera. And for someone who has tiny hands like me, I don't want to have to shimmy my hand up just to use that fingerprint sensor. But it could all be not true. Take everything with a grain of salt. But it looks like LG has theirs on the back in a smart position, so good. Good for you, LG. It looks like both of them are going to have a digital assistant of some kind, so Bixby for Samsung and then Google Assistant for the G6. So these are a lot of similar features. What is it that's going to differentiate these two phones? Well, we could say price. Price is a good one. Most likely the S8 will be more expensive than the G6. I'm seeing that both of them are going to be a bit more expensive than they were last year. We know most likely that both of them are going to have different processors, so it looks like Samsung is going to have the monopoly on the Snapdragon 835, unfortunately, so the LG will probably have the Snapdragon 821. I'm sure they're going to have different camera setups. Everything that we're seeing shows that the S8 is going to have a single camera on the back, or the G6 is going to stick with the dual camera setup that we're seeing on the V20 and also on the G5. Of course, we're going to be seeing different software features. It looks like we're going to be having different display technology, so expect AMOLED with the S8s. Expect two different models of the S8, a 5.8 inch display and also a 6.2 inch display where the G6 should only have a single IPS display at probably 5.7 inches from what I'm hearing. A boon for LG is if people do not like the curved display because it looks like Samsung is going to have those two models with curved displays this year, no flat screen option. That's going to make a lot of people kind of angry. Based on these leaked specs alone, let me know which device you would go for, but my biggest interest is where do people's loyalties lie at this point? Both Samsung and LG had quite a bit of blunders last year. You had LG having issues with the G5 being pretty much a prototype phone and also some marketing untruthfulness. Also, the G5 had some quality control issues. Plus, LG still has been plagued with the boot loop issues that people have been complaining about since forever. So with the research and questions that I've been asking people, it looks like a lot of people aren't really wanting to trust LG so readily 
are really going to have to see if they're going to have something that's going to hit it out of the park. Now on Samsung's end, the Note 7 went up in flames, literally. They did have a press release that told about what happened to help regain confidence in the brand and also in their engineering because it looked like the batteries were to blame and not the phone. So I feel that Samsung really saved their butts and it looks like people have gained a lot of confidence with that press release. So which one are you going for? Which OEM do you have most trust in right now? Samsung or LG? And I'm sure that's really going to determine which device people go for. So let me know which device you're most excited about. So this has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another tech day and 